man in the iron mask. When Edmund Marchiali has the dreaded iron mask clamped on his head and is thrown into the Bastille, he finds that his beloved Marguerite is in the cell next door. But the first flash of joy in this knowledge gradually becomes a torture, for the weight of this mask is slowly killing him. One night, as Marguerite, unable to see but still able to talk with him, speaks out to him from her cell, she suddenly realizes that his voice is gradually becoming fainter and fainter. It is then that she knows that the mask with its weight and its horror is slowly annihilating him. As she breathes a prayer for help, there is a sudden murmur. At the end of the long stone passageway, a voice cries out. Make way to the King of France. The King of France? Why is the King of France here? When he passes this cell, perhaps I could catch his attention. Edmund! Edmund, my darling, please answer me. Hold out a little longer. Oh, he doesn't answer. It's been too much for him, this mask. Oh, Edmund. It's the cell that's the next one, Your Majesty. Now, step carefully, Your Majesty. The dirt and the grime in these dungeons. Don't stop bowing and scraping and open the cell door. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Shut your mouth. How dare you a felon address his majesty. But what Get back. There. Now, let's shut your mouth. Back from the bar. Back, God. Why? Why, your majesty lies on the floor so still. Hey, you. Here, yeah, don't kick him. I want to preserve. Preserve, your majesty. But I fear... Yeah, just a moment... Yes, he does. I'll put my ear close. If I could hear his heart. What a filthy place it is here, Your Majesty. Really, you shouldn't have come. It's rather necessary. What a curse it is there just when I want him alive. Hmm. You're right to tell you. The smells down here are worse than the tenements on the other side of Paris. Uh, Your Majesty, he still lives. Oh, good. Eddie hope the mask has not been too much for him. I want him to live for some time yet. As he is unconscious, you will not be able to conduct any conversation with him at the moment, Your Majesty. Yes, I can see that. Oh, Lieutenant, tell the filthy-looking warders to have him and move from here to the guardhouse of the palace. And the mask, Your Majesty? The mask must remain for the moment until he's inside the guardhouse in the private rooms there. I also tell that smithy who made the mask to come to the guardhouse at once with his implement. Yes, Your Majesty. And, uh, oh, now I must be here. Oh, such a foul-smelling place. I had no idea of never been so far down in the dungeons of the Bastille before. I certainly wouldn't want to visit her again. Your Majesty! Who is it that's so persistently crying out? Didn't I tell you to shut your mouth? You want the lash of the knife? Get back into the darkness there and don't dare peep and pry through your bars. Exalted company is passing and it's not for the eyes of you. much longer will this operation take? Not very much longer now, Your Majesty. You've been nearly half an hour already, Smithy. The king is growing in pain. A thousand pardons, Your Majesty, but when I did the job, you told me to do it well. And besides, I, I've got to be careful, otherwise I'll kill him. Oh, I feel so impatient. I, I feel that I almost want to change my mind. All this bother. Uh, uh, <laughs> you had a pridedness. I think we can uh, remove the mask now. Uh, uh, perhaps if the surgeon should buy ready, uh, just in case. Perhaps, Sergeant. If this man's life is lost, you lose yours, understand? Yes. Now, if we take it carefully, all will be well. Uh, hey there. Uh, it's clear. Oh. oh, what a resulting sight. His face is blue. Are you sure he's a liar, Sturgeon? Yes, Your Majesty. But I couldn't bring him to until the mask was removed. 
Now, however, with your permission, Your Majesty. Uh, uh, go ahead. And call me when he's able to speak. Uh, Tom Natalia? Yes, Your Majesty. Well, at least, Your Majesty, there's no likeness between you and your brother now. Oh, you don't think so? Never have I seen such a ghastly face. Oh, he has had his fill of torture behind that mask. One can tell. Oh. Some time elapsed, during which the king was paid a visit by Cardinal Mazarin, who was ignorant of the fact that he had moved his twin brother Edmund from the Bastille. Louis, of course, said nothing of the matter, and having signed several papers which brought the cardinal to the palace, he soon dispatched him and then returned to the guardhouse, where he found that a message had already been sent off to tell him that Edmund had recovered. So leaving Letelier to wait outside the door, he opened it slowly and walked inside. Edmund was lying pale and drawn on a small trestle table. He was still finding it difficult to breathe, but it seemed that the doctor had done his work. Edmund was conscious and was able to speak. Well, my good-looking brother, so the world sees your face again. What fresh devil they have you for me? Oh, your manner is not engaging. That displeases me. And if it that matters to me, I've only one life. Only one life you to take. My dear brother, I don't want to take your life. Then what is your idea? A series of fiendish tortures. Is this to be my punishment because I'm so much like you, my twin brother? My own flesh and blood. My dear Edmund, I was horrified when I heard that the mass was having such an ill effect upon you. That's why I brought you here. <laughs> Don't lie. You saw the mask being put on me. You knew then that no human being could live under such conditions. Well, perhaps I attributed to you greater strength than you really possessed. My dear Edmund, surely my actions have proved my word. The mask lies there at your feet. You are no longer wearing it. What do you want of me now? Oh, I was tortured while you were in the Bastille, Edmund. You see, I have a conscience. You are my brother. We have the same flesh and blood. And then I was overwhelmed by a brilliant idea. Why shouldn't my brother help me in my tedious kingly duties? Help you? Oh, yes, my dear Edmund. At the moment, oh, we are not alike. Uh, your color, I fear, is rather alarming, and there are dark shadows under your eyes, and a rather revolting stubble of beard streaked with sweat. But when you bathe and suitably dressed, you and I will be as alike as two peas once again. Ah, that is why you can help me in my arduous suit as a state. Uh, I don't understand. Well, then, uh, let me explain further. Sometimes it is necessary for the King of France to be in two places at once. Sometimes there are duties the King of France is forced to face which are irksome to him. Today I conceived the brilliant idea that with you here in the palace, I would have a free hand. If I wanted to go elsewhere, unobserved, one might say. You mean, you want me to masquerade as you? My dear brother, you are recovering. Your intelligence is sharpening. Now that's exactly what I want. You see, if one is a king, one has many obligations, especially to the fair sex. But at the moment, there is a young lady for whom I pine. But she lives many miles away. But, uh, Louis, whoever you pine for can be brought to your door. After all, you are the king. Ah, in this case, my hands are tied. She happens to be the cardinal's niece. And the cardinal, oh, for some strange reason of his own, wishes to preserve his niece's safety. He has locked her away in a convent. Yes, Mazarin is an old fox. He knows that if I disappeared from the palace, well, I would be with his niece. So, if you are here dressed as the king dresses, the cardinal will leave me and uh, myself in our romantic place, so far away. So, you want me to masquerade as you? You trust me with such a charge? Oh, my dear Edmund, it was Cardinal Mazarin who taught me to trust no one. Of course... I must trust you to a certain degree. But if you so much as breathe the word of this masquerade, I would put you back into the mask without hesitation. 
Is that clearly understood? I haven't said yet that I accept your offer. Oh, but you will. Yes. There's an island not far from the coast, Edmund. An island with a fortress. You will reside on that island with your guardian. You will, of course, be obliged to wear a mask when others are there near. Not the mask on the floor. No, I could not bear the thought of a death. Rather, would it be a mask of lighter texture? A mask which you could darn and remove at will. Does the proposition appeal to you, then? If I refuse? If you refuse, then a great deal of time has been wasted. I'll call the smithy. Have this mask welded back on your head. You'll return to the Bastille. You have ten seconds to make up your mind. <laughs> uh, this is the manifestation of your brotherly love. One. Two. Three. Your consideration for me. Four. Five. Six. Your realization seven, that we are, after all, eight, in the same flesh and blood. Nine. Ten. Just a moment. Yes. Well, hurry. I accept the proposition. But there is a condition. Oh. And what is that condition? There is a prisoner in the next cell to mine. A woman. I will do all you want me to do, Louis. If you set her free. So Edmund bargains for the life and freedom of his beloved Marguerite. If his twin brother agrees, Edmund will be plunged into a strange masquerade, that of playing a king. Will he be able to carry this masquerade off successfully? And will Marguerite be freed from the Bastille? Make sure you hear the next interesting chapter of The Man in the Iron Mask. <laughs>